Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Steve. And I'm Scott. And together we're Backyard Musings, broadcasting live out of Valley. Science and Technology Channel. Masters of Nothing. Thank you for the Just subscribers. The messengers. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, and smash the subscribe button if you if you would please. Right. And the like button and all that. Other, all that, yeah. All yeah. yeah. Somehow it there. helps. I don't know how. All right. Trees near volcanoes might be the early warning signs scientists have been looking for. And now they can be watched from space. A NASA Smithsonian collaboration has revealed I think it's Smithsonian. The, the museum? I guess so. They, they put on a magazine too. It's very fascinating. Uh, collaboration has revealed that carbon dioxide released from rising magma makes surrounding vegetation greener, a subtle but trackable signal. Now that's counterintuitive. Because, like, you remember uh, Dante's Peak, the movie? No, uh, didn't see it. Well, the trees around the volcano, they're all dead from, like, sulfur, you know? So right. it's counterintuitive. Well, and if you go to uh, Yellowstone National Park, wherever there's that the geysers, the magma and stuff, there's no, I mean, there's vegetation around it, but not within Is the fields. Is it green and lush? No. I mean, well, I think this would be like the normal that. trees that are growing around the volcano, you know? Not up on the caldera. Okay. You know? Um. Uh, set up a trackable signal. Using satellite imagery and ground validation, science researchers are crafting a powerful new way to detect volcanic unrest before it erupts into disaster, potentially saving thousands of lives. Would you like to know more? Now, do you want to be up on that volcano checking out the tree? When no, <laughs> I do not. Uh, it turns out the trees can help warn us when a volcano is getting ready to erupt. Scientists have long known that changes in tree leaves, like becoming greener or more lush, can signal volcanic activity nearby. Now, thanks to an exciting collaboration between NASA and the Smithsonian Institution, researchers believe that they can spot these changes from space. They okay. might be able to spot them, but who's going to go up there and check, man? Well, it's just it's like drawn straw, you know, drawn the short straw. Has it his we, pay? I guess, yeah. Some of these guys that. It's like going to a scary movie. <clears throat> I don't go to scary movies, but obviously people do because they keep writing them and making them. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure there's people out there that'll do this for a buck. Hmm. Not me. Hmm. Sorry. As magma moves upward through the Earth's crust, it releases gases like carbon dioxide. Trees absorb this carbon dioxide. Naturally, that's why we love trees. And in response, their leaves often grow more vibrant and healthy looking. Using powerful tools like NASA's Landsat 8 satellite, we love that satellite, the Landsat, yeah, love it, along with airborne instruments flown as part of the Airborne Validation Unified Experiment, Land to Ocean, and that acronym is AVUELO, A-V-U-E-L-O, scientists are now able to detect these subtle signs from above. Roughly 10% of the global population lives in areas at risk from volcanic hazards. For people Pompeii, living in Herculaneum. Yeah. California. Mm -hmm. uh, for people living close to volcanoes, an eruption can bring intense dangers, uh, including flying rocks, thick ash, and waves of scorching gases. Even those uh, farther away can face serious threats like mudslides, falling ash, or even tsunamis triggered by volcanic eruption, uh, explosions. Since there's no way to stop a volcano from erupting. Not that we know of. Right. Uh, spotting the early signs of uh, of activity is vital for keeping people safe. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the United States ranks among the most volcanically active countries in the world. Okay. So you said there's no way to stop it, but there was a Star Trek episode where they stopped they the volcano. Dropped, didn't they drop something yeah. inside the volcano? And it wasn't working, and Spock had to go down in his suit, heat suit, and he had to tinker with it. There's gotta and be they more got Spocks just in out time. There. Maybe they'll be the ones that take up these... Uh, Star Trek these, can do it? Yeah. Kurt Spock, man, he was an amazing guy. He was. Before a volcano erupts, rising magma releases a mix of gases, including carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide. Yes, yeah, the sulfur that kills trees. While sulfur dioxide is easier to detect from space, the carbon dioxide that escapes early in the process is much harder to spot. And yet, this early release of carbon dioxide could offer one of the clearest first signs that a volcano is waking up. Uh, the remote detection of carbon dioxide greening of vegetation potentially gives scientists another tool, along with seismic waves and changes in ground height, to get a clear idea of what's going on underneath the volcano. 
quote, Volcano Early Warning Systems Exist, says volcanologist Florian Schwandner, chief of the Earth Science Division at NASA's Ames Research Center in California's Silicon Valley, who had teamed up with climate scientist Josh Fisher the of climate, Chapman University in Orange. Climate scientist. Yeah, okay. Uh, Cal, uh, Orange, California, uh, and the uh, Vulcan. I least went to that college. Uh, and the uh, volcanologist Robert Bogue, Bogue mm -hmm. of McGill University in Montreal a decade ago. Quote, the aim here is to make them better and make them earlier. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah, love it. Quote, Volcanoes emit a lot of carbon dioxide, said Bogue, but there's so much existing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere that it's often hard to measure the volcanic carbon dioxide specifically. While major eruptions can expel enough carbon dioxide to be measurable from space with sensors like NASA's Orbiting Carbon Observatory 2, detecting these much fainter advanced warning signals has remained elusive. Quote, a volcano emitting the modest amounts of carbon dioxide that might presage an eruption isn't going to show up in satellite imagery he said because of this scientists must trek to volcanoes to measure carbon dioxide directly however many of the roughly 1350 potentially active volcanoes worldwide are in remote locations or challenging mountainous terrain yeah, oh, of course. that makes oh, Fuji. yep that makes monitoring carbon uh, dioxide at these sites labor intensive expensive and sometimes dangerous. Okay, I've got I've got a sometimes. thought here. I've got an idea. Follow with me. We recruit Sasquatches, Bigfoots to do this because they're in the remote areas. I think you just had to throw that in there. I, that's what I'm saying. We recruit them, train them, pay them, give them fruits and nuts or something. What? They're not doing it. They're not doing it. Why not? Because, because those people, I think, that are running around in those suits are. The, they're phonies, so they're not going to do this. These are real creatures, man. You want me to read your segment? Relying on trees as proxies for volcanic carbon dioxide has its limitations. Many volcanoes feature climates that don't support enough trees for satellites to image. In some forested environments, trees respond differently to changing carbon dioxide levels and fires changing weather conditions. And plant diseases can complicate the interpretation of satellite data on volcanic gases. Still, Schwadner has witnessed the potential benefits of volcanic carbon dioxide observations firsthand. He led a team that upgraded the monitoring network at Mayon Volcano in the Philippines to include carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide sensors. In December 2017, a government, re uh, government researchers in the Philippines used this system to detect sig signs of an impe pending eruption and advocated for mass evacuations of the area around the volcano. Now, that this is pretty cool, but could you imagine people saying, you're crazy, man. The sky's falling, right? Yeah. But here we go. Over 56,000 people were safely evacuated before a massive eruption began on January 23rd, 2018. As a result of the only early warnings, there were no casualties. That's awesome. That is awesome. Just imagine if you were the boy who cried wolf and said it's going to erupt and nothing happened. Yeah, I'm not I mean, going. you'd be I'm gonna, ruined. I'm going to hide in the refrigerator. Or you, the, you'd or have the to really think about if you're going to issue that warning. Yeah. Using satellites to monitor trees around volcanoes will give scientists earlier insights into more volcanoes and offer earlier warnings of future eruptions. Quote, there's not one signal from volcanoes that's a silver bullet, Schwanner said. And tracking the effects of volcanic carbon dioxide on trees will not be a silver bullet, but it will be something that could change the game. I mean, and all these things like you put we, we did a segment with those sound sensors that measures the waves. Do that along with the this is a dioxide. great start, you know, yeah. and obviously it's time for this or they would have done it a long time ago. But yeah. this is good. Maybe the data that we've got enough the Landsat. You know, we can yeah. see it. Yeah. But for, yeah. Could you imagine just pinpointing that on trees? This is their, their, it's just fascinating that they're able to do this. Uh, tell us what you think about Bigfoot. We'll know that you made it through the entire segment. <laughs> Thanks, folks. Take care, everyone. See you, <laughs> see you tomorrow. <laughs> right?